Hey folks, it's Kikoskia here, and welcome back to Let's Play Betrayal at Krondor. And when last we left off, we have just left Malik's Cross after participating in a fantastic lecture, which gave us a lot of assessment skill. Now we're on our way back to Darkmoor to buy some books, but not before checking out these graves. There are a couple of graves here, and there may be things hidden here. Landra Maggard lost her mind before her life. We'll dig this up. Smoke seeped from the earth. Backing away from the defiled grave, Gorath watched in horror as the smoke began to wall into a sparkling maelstrom. Well, that's unfortunate. Hello, bad guy. Well, not what I was hoping would happen, but it's happened. Have at thee! Hopefully we can very quickly slay this thing. I hope so. They are they are dangerous, these spirits. And it's gone. Whew. Okay, so don't dig up that one. Death by association. Just a bot that's strange. No body. No body at all. Okay, so that one is bad. Um Loved her kings. Nobody. Gratefully dead. Just a body. Mother, wife, lover. And that's also just the body. So the only thing we got there was combat. Also, it's getting dark. Also, our ration situation is not great. We might want to sort that when we pass back. Which way are we heading here? I think we are... I have no idea which way we're going. I know which way we should be going. And it's this way. We should be going this way. So let's just follow the road for a bit. This should bring us to Darkmoor pretty quickly. Yep, here's Darkmoor. And I would like to check out the shop. Now, there are a couple of things here. I've actually looked up what the books do. And this is important because we're going to need to buy some very specific books. Let's also get our haggling going because we do want to uh, improve that very slightly while we're here. Not all of these are useful. And I'm also really thinking about selling the book that gives, like, tons of skills. At the same time, if we get someone else in our party, they could really do with having that one. So I think I'll keep that one. Let us look at the ones we want to buy here. Now, Strategies of Trading gives us haggling. Chapel's Rumor and Weapons is very expensive at 472. And you'd think from the description that I'd want to buy it. Even, a, even with a cursory glance, you could tell the book was rife with spelling errors, apparently much to the vexation of a previous reader. Large sections of the document have been struck through and rewritten in a more elegant hand in the margins of the book. This gives you armor craft and weapon craft, and you think, oh, Gorath wants that. Well, not really, because Gorath has ridiculous weapon craft and armor craft anyway. Don't need to improve that. Do, however, need to improve what the Psalms of Dala gives us. The illuminations inside the book depicted a variety of scenes. A man blocking a sword thrust, the goddess Dala watching over men on the field of battle, mercenaries kneeling in front of the temple of Dala near High Castle. Overall, the text looked more like a religious tract than a manual of battle. We want this one. We also want to haggle for it. And apparently you won't give it to us. Okay, fine. Um, will you hand it over to us now? That's a sizable discount. We'll buy it. Now, we also want Acts of Shamata Garrison. It's buying a patchwork of cracked hide and shining a shiny leather, new pages sandwiched between ancient sheaves of parchment. The book had been repaired numerous times during its long history. It's only 202. And we've now made it 162. That is a fine discount. We want none of the other things here, but you want to bet that we're going to haggle for everything 
anyway. We need that haggle experience. So let's get some haggling done. Oh yeah, can't haggle for the uh, larger pile of rations when we've already made the smaller one unavailable. Also, we could sell our rope here. Fine, we only get one royal, but you know what? We get an inventory space back, and that is the true treasure here. That is the true treasure. The true treasure is inventory space, which, trust me, is at a ridiculous premium. We are going to start using our restoratives at some point. We are going to start using them, and when we do, we'll be glad that we have them. Also, we could buy another one of these. These, This is 540 sovereigns. That is why I'm keeping it. That is why I'm keeping it. That is a very expensive book. Haggling has gone up. It's not the only thing that's going to go up. So I want to, um, once I've uh, switched away from these, I want to tick Defense. Because one of these books, um, the um, Psalms of Dala, is going to raise defense. And considering that we're taking a lot of hits here, even with our dwarven armor, raising defense seems like a really good plan. Essentially a book of prayers, most of the Psalms dealt with the mythology surrounding the Defender Goddess and her frequent clashes with the war god Tith Onaka. It advised which prayers should be said upon waking, which should be used before sleeping, before eating, before entering inns, and most importantly, which should be mouthed before entering battle, so that the Defender Goddess would add her favour to the Faithful's ability to defend him or herself. It also mentioned in passing that the Goddess would also lend her favour to those that drank the Dalatail Milk sometimes sold by her followers. Interesting. Clearly there must have been something good in there to, uh... learn from. Because... Upon us all reading this a few times... Our defense has increased. Your defense is now 59%, your defense is now 65%, and your defense is now 68%. I'm a little sad that there isn't a book pertaining to Accuracy Melee, but what can you do? I'll tell you what we can do. We can tick Assessment, because the other book I bought is about that. Yes, I did look up the books, because uh, that's an expensive mistake to make, not having the uh, right book to hand. So, the Acts of Smarter Garrison. Double-checking. Yep, I have Assessment, Assessment, and Assessment. Let's read. Primarily, the book was about battle, the majority of the text concerning itself with various famous skirmishes which had been fought between the members of the Kingdom Garrison of Shamata and the famed dog soldiers of the Great Empire of Kesh. Perhaps more valuable was the wealth of information which had been gathered on different fighting techniques, each highly detailed with illuminated diagrams on stances, swings, and other issues concerning themselves with the act of fighting. Also included in the book were a number of smaller anecdotes about standard life at the garrison, the amount of food consumed in one month by the soldiers, the cost of weapons imported from the Empire, and the difficulties in purchasing goods when political swings were taking place. One story which particularly took Owen's interest was the mention that a potion called Redweed Brew was a major import of the garrison, and they claimed it temporarily enhanced how well the soldiers fought in battle. Good to know! Oh. Right, we want to read the book that is at 99. And you want oh. to read the book that is at 99. Now, the reason why these books have a lot of pages is that you can keep reading them for a small chance at gaining more skill increases, but the biggest oomph is from the first read, because now you're at 69% assessment, you're at 39, and you're at 79. And those are some big increases. And now we're going to sell these books back, because um, I don't need these anymore. And quite honestly, we could do with the space. We could do with the space in our inventory, so please say you're going to buy these back off us. Ah, not for much, but it was worth it. A couple of hundred sovereigns for some skill increases, very much worth it. This book, still don't want to get rid of that. Can I get rid of this? No. I might actually want to use that, honestly. 
I might actually want to use that. Either way, we are done here now. Uh, save the fact that we need a couple of rations. We do need some rations. So let's actually buy some rations. Let's buy them. Uh, 14? Sure. Get a small discount. Share with the party. We're good. We're inevitably going to need them, so... Uh, actually, you, you claimed to share them, but you didn't actually give them out properly. There we go. Now we're at 13, 14. That's much better. Much better. Okay. Now... We can start move. Oh, no we can't. We are very tired. Let's just sleep. Now we can start moving. We'll go past Malik's Cross and we will make some progress. So Malik's Cross is there. And there's an area up here. I want to have a look around here because I haven't uh, actually looked in this area yet. Is there anything here at all? Anything nice? Any treasure chests? Any goodies? Any... Nope! Nope! There's absolutely nothing. Okay, worth looking at, though. Worth looking at. Or maybe not. Either way, we are here. We are sort of following the path, and at the same time, not following the path. Is there anything... There's a bunch of trees here that makes me think there's something hidden in this area. Oh, there is! It's getting dark, though. Hello, dead person! Dead person! With... with just normal rations! C cool! I'll take those. I'll also take that shell as well. It's not very high quality, but it is better than nothing. And this is why you died. Mort Hell Lockbox. Gorath scanned the runes embossed on the Mord Hell plate. Magic, death, temple, bless, rest. At last you may solve this. Hmm. At last you may solve this. So nothing links all of these that I can see right now in my head. There's something about the words. Something about the letters. What do we have? We have Sasu, Tasu, Kasu. There's a C in this. Klasu. No R in death. There is a H in death. No I. There's an E. An S. Oh! There were also just the final letters of each of the words. What do we have? Royals? Potion? Torches? We'll take the lockpicks. We won't take anything else, though. We're really hoarding lockpicks. I don't mind hoarding lockpicks. Lockpicks are a good thing to hoard. They're a good thing to have too much of. Now... We need to see if there's anything else nearby. There could be. Probably an ambush we're gonna stumble into, though. I'm good at stumbling into ambushes. I don't want to be good at stumbling into ambushes, but I am. Hmm, what does this lead to? This seems like a settlement. This seems like... Or a farm. Ah, it's a farm. Okay, let's, uh... Ooh, and a graveyard. Huh. The barn was musty and dark. Searching with straining eyes and groping hands, Gorat suddenly called out, Over here, I think I've found something. Halfway up one wall of a structure, a small X had been scratched into the wood, and just below this spot, there was a raised area of dirt. Together, they began to dig, and several feet below the surface uncovered a rotting wooden box. Inside were twelve silver royals 
in a small leather pouch. Cool, we just found someone's hidden treasure, and it's kind of worthless. There was a black ribbon hanging on the door. James took a step back and scowled, staring at the ribbon, as though he were trying to decide on the proper course of action. Why do you look at the house that way? What does the black ribbon mean? The ribbon is a sign of the sickness. It's essentially a warning signal to others to keep away. And yet it seems someone has recently gone through this house. Looking for something, perhaps. Should we go in and have a look around? Yes. There was a smell of death in the air. Entering the house, it became obvious that someone had indeed conducted a fairly thorough search. Seeing nothing of interest, James turned to leave. Come on, let's get out of here. It may be too late, or... He stopped in mid-sentence as his eyes fell on a discoloured floorboard in the corner of the room. Crossing the small house in three giant strides, he carefully used the tip of his sword to pry the board up. Then he tip slipped his fingers under and gave it several hard tugs. The board came free with a splintering crack. James slowly reached down into a dark rectangular hole and excitedly pulled out a small bag. Spilling the shiny contents of the bag on the floor, he began to count. Thirty-four gold sovereigns, he said. Probably the life savings of the unfortunate family that lived here. We will, we will have need of this money, but I'll be sure to give a charitable donation of equal size to Father Tully should we ever see Crondor again. Now let's get out of here. He might be paying for this small windfall with our lives. Oh! We are all plagued. Okay! So we are plagued. Um, I'm, I'm gonna save in a different slot here, because I'm a little worried about plagued. Can we rest off plagued? I, I'm a little worried we can't. I mean, we've got enough restoratives. We can absolutely rest off plagued, maybe. The Traveler's Friend. Let's dig it up. Just a body. Hated everything. All right. Just another body. Poor, poor Danny had a bad spell. That's a ton of rope. I do not need 45 pieces of rope. His death has enriched our lives. Oh, money. And... Had a nasty ailment. Just another body, right. So our stats are going to start to... That plagued is going up. That plagued is going up. If I camp until here, what happens? We just... Die. Okay, so we just die. How do I cure plague? Plague goes up as time goes on. Um, that deals with anti-venom. That deals with that. That's true sight T. Dollar's Hell Milk. None of this is helping us with plague. Is there a temple nearby? There's a temple in Malik's Cross. This is probably going to cost us a lot of money doing this, but uh, let's actually get the Enriched Our Lives one. need that money. We are going to need that money, because, um, yeah, I think we need to head back to, uh, to, um, Malik's Cross really quickly. Else we're going to die. Malik's Cross is here. Okay. Temple. Please help me out. James was studied. It would require many hours of our time, and even priests must find ways to pay for their needs. Whoa. That's expensive. That is expensive. You know what? That's so expensive that, um... 
Give me one moment, and I'll be back. Here's a plan, me. Next time you want to go into a place that may be full of disease and death, save before you go in, and not afterwards. I have made it back to where we were. We have read those books, I've got the haggling experience, I've opened the Mordhell chest, I've even got the gold in the grave at the back. But we're not going in there. 30 sovereigns is not worth it if you're going to spend 150 healing. Also, this just seems to lead down there. Huh, what's this lead to? It leads to... The name of the signpost has long worn away. All right, let, let, let's head down. What's the worst that could happen? I'll tell you what's the worst that could happen. Death. James squinted. While he was expecting to see the spires of some distant town or the smoke of a Chandler's hearth fire at the twist of the road, he was surprised to see instead a greyish lump settled near a clump of young trees. Have you ever heard of a grey dragon, Owen? James asked. Owen shook his head. No, why? Because that's what may be at the end of this road, James replied. Feeling brave? We can go and have a closer look. Sure! Chiseled from dark stone, the statue of the dragon was rendered with frightful realism, its burning gaze surely as malicious in stone as it had been in life. Most impressive of all, most impressive of all, were the yellow teeth and claws stained cleverly at the tips with a red pigment to simulate the blood drawn from an unfortunate victim. Ooh, nice! We have more of that. They don't stack. Why don't they stack? That's a nice reward. The statue was large. Walking around its base, Gorath couldn't help but admire the sinuous curve of the dragon's back, the whole of it covered with beveled scales. Rounding the tail of the creature, he called for Owen to come and have a look, but was startled by the clouded apprehension in the boy's blue eyes. Something is wrong, Gorath asked. Owen gasped as if to say something, then made a motion to the statue before collapsing to the ground. Oh! The Oracle of... What? The Oracle of Arl. Greetings, Owen. What? Where am I? While your body is lying safe, still and silent in a cove near Malik's Cross, your mind has journeyed elsewhere. Here. Your arrival has been expected. I am pleased to have you as my honored guest, Owen Belfort of Tyburn. Me? At journey's end, you shall not be as you are, nor may you turn back the way you have come. The times ahead of you will be filled with hardship, and many times you will believe yourself far less significant than you truly are. In the days to come, you may stand at a critical juncture between Rytha and Mytha. And if that time comes to pass, you should know this. A time comes for all things to die. What does that mean? Who are Rytha and Mytha? I can explain in no measure more as you yet understand your world. In years and in wisdom you will come to me again, and a great destiny will be upon you by then. You will be ready for the fullness of truth in that dis on that distant day. Until such times, you may consult me on other matters. Tales say that dragons know their own destinies, but I had not heard that they knew the destinies of others. I am no dragon, though I wear a dragon's skin. I am the Oracle of the Arl, and I am the last of my race. I am ancient, older than dwarf or elf, older than dragons, and older than the Valheru who were their masters. Stars that are at birth flamed with violent power have long grown cold, expired. All these things I have seen, and farther yet I see into the things that might be. You can see the future? I can glimpse things that may be. Such was the gift given to all those of my race. There's a lot to unpack here. A mortal travels with us named Gorath. Is he what he says he is? Can we trust him? He is not what he names himself to be, though even he may not know the lie of his heart. He will be a strong ally unto you, and I believe he may even be a champion to the kin who now curse his name. A great destiny awaits him, should he have the courage to renounce his pain. 
and Delicon. Gorath told us of a Mordhel leader, Delicon. Will he cross the teeth of the world and attack the kingdom? Delicon will never cross the boundary between the kingdom and the Northlands. But through treachery he will strike a blow against both the kingdom and his own nations of the North. Can't you be more specific? Where is he going to strike? What is the nature of his treachery? I do not see futures as you imagine, but futures as they perhaps can be. I know only that Delacon engineers a deceit with six magicians, and that it concerns the fate of the kingdom. And there's nothing else I can really talk about right now. And nobody's going to talk about that! Are you alright? What happened? Oh, nothing. I just talked to a dragon. There wasn't a dragon, and there was a weird alien race thing. What? Are you sure you didn't bang your head on the claw? Let, let, let's go. So, that was a thing that happened. And so, when we come back, folks, we're gonna head north, I think, to Lightem. We've been told of things that are happening in Lightem. None of them are good. And maybe we'll find a couple of treasures along the way. Maybe there's a treasure over here. Nope, there's a trap. Great! I've triggered a trap. Huh. What am I going to do here? Well, I'm going to have you wait. And we're going to cast a big spell on you. We're just going to give you a lot of armor. And hopefully that will do the trick. I hope it will, because I have no idea how to get you through this otherwise. Um... You know what? Have 20. Have some invisible armor. Just have invisible armor. And we'll just move you to, say, here. You can rest. Rest. And just go forward. Yep. That, that did the trick. Just... Give you skin of the dragon, and you don't care. Also, a locked box. Well, we're totally going to try and open this. And I'm totally going to save before I try and open this. This is what that trap was guarding. So, let's... Oh, it exploded. Uh, good news, it exploded and nobody died. But it exploded. I really should have... <laughs> the box was charred. Wary that the trap had, which had incinerated the box for the first time might not be completely deactivated. Owen looked to his companions. Want to risk trying to open it now? Oh, I mean, there's money in there, but I'm really... I should probably see if there's anything better in there after casting a spell. Yeah, I, I, I really should have thought about spells. Also, I'm pressing the wrong buttons. Uh, we need... The, uh... Scent of Sarek! Oh, look, it's trapped! Oh, look, it's still exploded. Well... That's unfortunate. We can rest, though. We can absolutely rest. I mean, we do have a lot of this powder. We have a lot of this powder. And it's good for healing up. We need it, because, ow, my face. All of my face. Badly scarred and charred. But it will heal. At least that's the hope. Right, how long will it take to heal? Not that long when we use the, um... We use the, uh, purple pouch. Oh, also dead person! You should have been the hint to me that something bad was going to happen. Also, we have too much of this now. We're just hoarding stuff. We really should sell some of it. If we can find someone who'll buy it. And so, when we come back, folks, we will head forward to Lightem. And hopefully, we won't run afoul of those people that are demanding huge taxes. Oh, who are we kidding? We're totally going to run afoul of them. We are totally going to run afoul of those people. But maybe, just maybe we'll be able to defeat them. That's the hope anyway. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.